Hi there, today we have the DJI M30 prototype which is one of the brand new enterprise range drones from DJI. Uh, we're going to today quickly go over, let's have a kind of first look at the drone, let's see what the optic can do, let's see what the batteries can do in flight time and IP rating and after that we'll go into the controller. We're not going to touch on the flight hub side of the life today, that's a later video to follow which I think Jack will be doing later. Uh, first of all, we have the drone down here. Now, we've got it all set out. As you can see, it's designed to be very modular and close up very easily. So I'm going to just pop it away to let you see what kind of size we're looking at and then we'll unpack it. So that's it packed away. It's designed to go in a backpack, this one. Unlike its bigger brother, it needs to be easily transported. Now, always back ones first. And they just click into place lift it up and it's just a little pop move the propeller and pop right turn the drone on double press that we're all used to so it's a one push and then on the second push and hold right so you'll see with this one what's different to some standard quadcopters is you've got two motors facing up the way and the rear two motors facing down the way uh, we believe this will give it better uh, wind resistance. Speaking of on this drone, you've got a top wind resistance of approximately 24 miles an hour. Uh, your limiting factors take off and landing. You need under 12 m uh, meters per second for takeoff and landing. Now, let's go into what truly makes this drone and this package. It's not just a drone, it's not a payload, it's one package. Uh, we have on this model, we have three. Uh, individual payloads that, payloads that integrate and come together to give you the full package. So you've got a 200 times optical zoom down the bottom, you've got a 1200 meter rangefinder, and a 12 megapixel wide angle camera. So on this drone, you also have up the top here, you can see on what makes this different from its bigger brother, the M300 is the FPV style camera up here. It allows for uh, good vision in low light situations, which is good for first responders and allows you to carry on your inspections into the day. Right, we're gonna introduce you to the controller side of life here. Now you'll see a huge, not only a huge screen, but a huge upgrade to the entire controller. This is a big step up from DJI. You'll see how I'm handling it, it's very light. Uh, what I would say is the first usable controller with gloves and actually a usable Home enterprise. Ooh. Check map to confirm. Sorry, that's the home point updating. So, a whole new software system, which is a key part of the new M30 range, is, is in here. We're not going to dive into that just now. This is literally a let's have a first flight and let's have a kind of look at what the platform can do. Uh, you can visually see the controller system there. Now, very quickly, in the back, what is handy in this model is it accepts a W37 battery like the ones before and an internet dongle should you want this to be a smart controller. Right, so just one or two final things on the control system which makes it fantastic. Normally it was a touch screen system, it was very kind of temperamental, you had to, a bit of difficulty getting it to do what you want it to do. This one has very clear customizable buttons that you just press and it controls things like zoom, tilts of angles, and uh, just anything that you need to control your drone with is at a touch of a button now, opposed to a touch of a screen. Uh, we're gonna take off the drone now. So see, I'm just going to do some figure of eights in front of you to kind of show how this flies. Look how this flies beautifully. I mean, that it's much smoother than the M300 platform, I would say. More stable in flight. I mean, that's a big boy and I'm kind of throwing them about. Let's see the fast it goes up and down. See, that's a fast climb rate. I would say more similar to your Mavic 3 range of climb layer rates. Right, at this stage I'm gonna just record the screen. Right, we have screen recording. 
Right, so currently the view you're seeing on the screen is the FPV screen. So let's have a look how that looks as I'm flying about. So you've got details like wind speed, so WS across the left. Wind speed at the moment is about 3 metres per second, which is well within tolerances. Not many drones will give you an up-to-date and accurate wind speed as you're flying. It's a very complex. Uh, we have uh, a few birds out at this time of year, so we're just going to head away a wee bit from the birds. Reaching maximum altitude. Now, because this is a proto prototype version, uh, and we've got a maximum altitude, so I'm just going to stay within that. Right, so we're going to swap across to, which is a touch of the screen, or you've got a few options on how you slide across. Now, we're on the wide angle, let me just see, I'm going to swatch, switch across by using the L2 button to the zoom, because that's what we're here for. Let's zoom out. Let's see if you can spot me and Jack for a second. Oh, there we are. Right, there's your first look at the zoom, let's get a distance on. Right, so I just pressed the rangefinder button there, we're about 80 metres away from Jack and myself there. Let's see what we can zoom in on. Let's see, there you go, the logo jack. 80 metre range. Oh, now, that, that's a very good example of how difficult it is the screen to control using the gimbal sticks. See if you're zoomed in highly. Tap the screen and it comes across to your desired location. So I'm just tapping the screen where I want it to come across and that's slightly easier to do when you're zoomed in. Now let me just refocus that, there you go. Let's zoom in. Now see I want to go up so I'm going to just bring the target up a little bit and then zoom in further. Let's see if that will focus there, there you go. So at this time we're going to do what I call a mock-up kind of inspection, a commercial, normal commercial inspection. What we're looking for here is rust, corrosion, does it need maintenance? So we've got a perfect example at the back of the house that we're using just now, and it's a telegraph pole. We'll have a wee look. My rangefinder's showing it about 160 metres just now, so let's get the drone a bit closer. Right, as you can see, if you're following the screen or if we're following on this camera, we've repositioned the drone to the other side. So we're looking at, on the rangefinder, I'm just going to start zooming in, we're looking at about a safe distance away from anything that is not owned or involved is about 50 metres. We have intentionally planned this at about 50 metres because this is where we would do an inspection in real life. So let's have a look. Now you can see I'm a little bit off at this stage, so I'm just going to double tap the screen on the centre and it positions us just a little bit more, boom. Right, at this stage we can use the smart track if we don't want to lose the object. And then let's just zoom in. Right, I'm going to take a few photos there because this is a perfect example. Now at that stage everything is beautifully visible, we can go in further and we've not lost any sort of resolution in the image there. Let's just have a wee look towards the top. Let's take some images there. Look at these bolts here. Now, another good thing about this system is we can, ge we can geotag using uh, GPS coordinates. So we can either capture the location of the drone or we can use the rangefinder and pin the location of something. So let's try that just now. Right, so we're looking at an L3 button for us. Now I've just pressed L3, that tags the location, we jump in and that gives us a shareable GPS coordinate. Now, for example, if we use that in inspections, we'd be using it to share the location of the asset. It may, on a larger building, we may be able to highlight where there's a leak in a roof perhaps, or where there's a downpipe that needs some maintenance. On a search and rescue, first responders basis, this is key for guiding in ground teams to the right location. So not only can you pinpoint where the drone is, you can send and tag locations using the laser rangefinder. So this is the key coordination and integration of the drone, is the three payloads together, integrated together, so that it all works together. So we have the zoom so we can see, we have the rangefinder so you can actually gauge the distance and then the, the GPS and RTK system that's involved with this to, 
to find the GPS location for the ground team. Right, so just before I bring the drone in, I hope you've learned something from this brief introduction. It's just a quick highlight of some of the features of the new M30 range from DJI. Let's see, this is going to get noisy here. <laughs> 